Hello friends and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. This is the course Linux Operating System Basics with Vagish Kumar. Okay, so uh, we can see over here that our installation is now successfully completed. So that is what the message over here is being displayed. So the next step that we have to do is to reboot our system which can be done simply by clicking reboot on the console uh, on the console available in front of you on your screen so once you click reboot your virtual machine will be shut down first it will get terminated and then it will come up again and let us see that how does it boot in now so here it is giving the grub menu the grub is the default Linux uh, bootloader which is there in most of the distributions of Linux so inside it it is showing us two kernel options one is for uh, the normal boot up and the other one is for rescue mode in which uh, in case you have some problem with your system there is some kind of a system crash or something like that so you can boot into a rescue mode and you can maybe save your data or you can also correct some problems so we'll boot using the uh, Linux 3.10 uh, kernel which is the default option just take your uh, selection to it so that that is highlighted by using the up and down arrow keys and then press enter to continue the boot process so now it will take a few seconds uh, maybe close to one minute to boot so the progress bar shows the boot up process and then you have certain logs that will keep on coming on the Linux system which shows the boot progress so here the user interface is now starting to build up you have got your mouse or the turtle that whatever you want to call it the mouse pointer is there on the screen and the uh, default GUI is up now it is asking you for the configure configuration of the K dump K dump is nothing but a kernel dump so in case your system crashes you can uh, your all the data of your RAM and other critical data is stored on the K dump so that you can share this with some Linux experts who can analyze why your system has crashed so you can reserve some memory for that so automatically just leave it to automatic so it will find out the best settings for your RAM and your hard disk space and click on forward so after that it will take you further into the boot process and just wait a few seconds before your desktop actually appears so we have installed the genome desktop and that is what we'll be seeing in a matter of second so here you have the edupedia user which is to, by default over there and it is generally not recommended in Linux to log in using the GUI and the root user so it is although prohibited that root user should not log in to a graphical user interface but it can be done if you want to log in as root user to the graphical user interface just click on not listed and then you can enter your username as root and again enter the password that you have kept for the root user so click on sign in and it will log in into the default GUI screen So here your desktop, a very beautiful version of the user interface has come up. So you can see that it is sent to a 7 and uh, you can just a few settings again popping up. So select India with rupee signs instead of dollar. If you actually click dollar it will print a rupee sign over there. So you want to connect to some cloud so you can click add account so I am skipping this option right now start using CentOS Linux that is what we have clicked okay so now it is time to just introduce you to this uh, genome desktop so just click uh, close the browser window that just pops up so it is just taking you to default screen of CentOS nothing else here is the basic set of applications that you have so just corresponding to the start menu in your windows uh, 
it is the applications button that you, you can click so in your windows desktop or in your kde environment in linux the start menu is generally at the bottom of the screen but in genome as it has generally been it is on the top of the screen so you have various options which is a firefox which is the default browser then you have rhythm box for listening to music then you have some office applications then you have files which is corresponding to your my computer so when you click on click over it you will land into something sort of a my computer and this is the home desktop so a home location for a root users the home folder is forward slash and root so uh, now what we can do is we can start and can try to configure our network so for that first thing that we have to do is we have to check that on our virtual machine that are uh, what is the state of our network adapter so to do that what you have to do is just restore your virtual machine so that the setting is actually visible to you let me just resize it to a smaller size sorry okay so here are the various settings which are available so you can see the network icon over here just right click it and click on network settings so right now the natting uh, is nat adapter mode is connected so you have various different um, options to select over here so I would prefer that you should use the bridged adapter if you are using a home based Wi-Fi network so I am right now using my own personal Wi-Fi network which is created by my router inside my home only so most of you I guess would be using that similar kind of a network so you can go for a bridged network in bridged network what will happen is that your virtual machine will attach yourself uh, will attach itself to the router as a separate system and it will get a different IP so what will that help us do is it will help us do uh, access our virtual machine using that particular IP from our laptop and from any other system in the same network also so just click on cable connector should be checked then just click on OK over here once you click on OK so its uh, settings will be saved now what you have to do is so that these settings are actually reflected in your network configuration go to the network settings just restart the network once so it has picked up the IP 192.168.1.35 so I can recognize that this, this is the IP that is actually assigned by my Wi-Fi router so you can also verify by looking into the IP address of your local system Windows system so to do that click on your start menu first then click on Windows key plus R so for opening this run dialog and then you can open the command prompt by entering CMD option on this there is a command known as IP config sorry IF uh, IP config yes IP config IP C O N F I G when you enter this command it will display the various IP addresses that your system has got so check for the wireless LAN adapter if you are using the Wi-Fi connection if you are not using wireless uh, con connection then you can check for your Ethernet uh, adapter so right now my Ethernet adapter is this one which is not connected it is disconnected wireless LAN adapter is connected and its IP is 192.168.1.37 so you can see that it is a similar IP that has been allocated to my virtual machine also which is 192.168.1.35 so these have been allocated by my Wi-Fi router and we can test this that both the machines can access each other by pinging by using the ping command so ping command actually lets you to check whether some other machine is available on the network or not by just writing ping and the IP address of the other machine so in that case in this case the IP address of our virtual machine is 192.168. 1.35 so this is the IP address of my virtual machine which now I am entering on my Windows machine to try and ping it so it is getting a reply 
from the said IP address that means it is able to ping my virtual machine so both can communicate to each other similarly I can try to ping my Windows machine from my virtual machine also so to do that just right click over on your desktop and open in terminal click on open in terminal so here your terminal is opened which is your default Linux CLI interface okay so right now you are in the desktop directory so here also you can have you can check your IP address by using the command ifconfig so we will do these config uh, commands in detail later on but for the time being just uh, I will be using this command so to show you the IP address of my system so if I enter ifconfig it will show me the IP address and the interface name interface name that it has picked is ENP0S3 and the IP address is 192.168.1.35 so similarly from here you can try and ping your windows desktop IP so the windows desktop IP that I have got over here is and just let me check it once right now it is not sort of able to access the Windows desktop IP so there might be some firewall issue that might be blocking so you have to take care of all these kinds of issues and you have to resolve these issues so anyways uh, the more important thing is that my Windows desktop should be able to access my Linux uh, desktop so that is more important for me because that is what I actually have to do I do not need to reverse access at this point of time okay so let us check if net is configured on my uh, laptop uh, my Linux desktop if I am able to ping google.com if I am not then we might need to do some additional configuration for that okay so I can ping google.com so that means that I am connected to the net internet okay so uh, here we have booted into our Linux system and let us check the partition layout so is it the same as we did or not just click on this home icon on your desktop which is available and then you can click to computer over here so on inside computer you will be able to see various partitions so when you click on computer I told you that this forward slash icon this points to your root folder okay so the, the folder that has the parent of all the other directories which is corresponding to my computer in Windows so in the inside this you will see all the partition various partitions as well as some folders will be there okay so inside your my computer in Windows there are various partitions only which are listed which is like C drive D drive E drive and your CD drive also is listed over here but in Linux you rather have folders over here so these folders might be mounted on different partitions okay so here at this point of time we don't have any other partitions mounted because the three partitions that we created were root boot and swap swap is never mounted it is just used by your system internally boot is never shown over here because boot actually contains the bootable code of your Linux operating system Linux kernel so it is only used while your system is booting so it is over here although it is shown over here but you should not try and modify anything from over here by opening it so you have boot inside it then you have various folders and this is the home directory for the root user which is root and it is over here so we also now if you want to check and use the command ifconfig and you can see that IP address has been allocated over here
Okay, so this was the basic Linux desktop that we have now brought up. So you have learned how to install Linux uh, CentOS operating system on your virtual machine and now you can go ahead and experiment with it. We will also continue to learn more advanced usages of this operating system. We will start by learning the network configuration in detail in the very next video and then we will see how to install various softwares, various other softwares, you, how you can install them. Then we will learn various commands that you can use through CLI. But till that time if you want to browse some net you can just go to applications Firefox open up the Firefox web browser and you will be able to access the net okay so I hope that whatever we did in this particular video was clear to you so in case of any questions you can leave a comment inside the just below this video on YouTube so Thank you for watching and continue to watch the course Linux Operating System Basics with us. Thank you.